All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today and letting us into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. This is a KISS-related podcast by the board for the board. We hope that you enjoy. All right, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. It's episode 451. We're back with Studio Deathmatch number eight, which is going to feature random songs from Hotter Than Hell going up against random songs from Animal Eyes. Animal Eyes. <laughs> well, any songs from Kiss's, anyway. Kiss's best-selling album from the 1980s top a album that's had a lot of criticism uh, for its sonics, but is chock full of classics. It's going to be interesting to find out. So we got everyone on the crew showing up on a Saturday. So thank you all for giving us your time. And thank you to everyone out there in comment land, Bill Phelps, AB, Ronnie Parker, for joining us live for this episode. If you're on Facebook, give StreamYard permission um, to take all your private information so that you can comment. Um, and no doubt they'll uh, try and sell you shit as well as a result. Rodrigo, thank you for joining from Brazil. So let's just do a little bit of uh, the news roundup because yesterday was Paul Stanley's birthday. So happy birthday, star child. He's still the reason I became a KISS fan. I actually listened to Tears Are Falling yesterday, which was that video that got me hooked on the band in the first place. And then I moved on and listened to the, well, LA 98 soundboard, followed by Tokyo 95 soundboard. So the uh, the powerful star child of way back when. Um, any thoughts on Paul's birthday before we get to the other celebration that took place last weekend? I just wish I look that good when I'm 71. Damn right. Me too. I'm... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I think if we all had that kind of money and, you know, the kind of medical things that he can get, no, I think we would probably look pretty good at 70. It's all natural. It's all natural. Oh, of course. <laughs> just like his just like his metal joints that he has in his body for his shoulders yeah, and, and legs. And his, and... his chin as well. That kind of <laughs> grew in 92, you know, became a little bit bigger. But in, but in all seriousness, happy birthday, Paul. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Mark, he needed a new shoulder because he smashed all those guitars <laughs> for you. For, for me right. specifically, yeah. yes. Rocated Thank you, Paul. Enough. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, so, so Paul, hope you had a great day yesterday. I know he's not listening to this yet, so let's move on to last weekend. Vinnie Vincent's party took place at SIR in um, in Nashville. Uh, who went? Who went to? Uh, which one of you guys wanted to go to that show? And no doubt you may have heard some stuff that's leaked out of the event by now. Uh, your thoughts on that, if you want to go there. I just I uh, by this at this point, you know that Vinnie Vincent is kind of, you know, out, out there. He's uh, not really there completely. And uh, <laughs> after after watching that that train wreck that was Creatures Fest when he stood on the tank and did his wank, um, I don't know whatever to expect after that. So I would certainly not go and, and watch one of his. I would rather go to Bruce's event that took place, uh, you know, the, around. Uh, I think it was New Year's Eve. Mm. I mean, he still he still knows how to do it, but Vinny has lost the plot long time ago. Mm. So I'm not really sure why these people pay to go and visit him and, and watch him, but maybe one of them will tell us. I, I have no idea, really. Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> would I, I, I would maybe go if it was close by and it was cheaper. <laughs> That's about A lot it. cheaper. I mean, you know, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's good for the you know the Vinny fans. He, he has his fans, and uh, they enjoy him, and you know they want to get to see him any chance they get. And that's you know more power I'll, to them. I'll just say, my mother taught me this a long time ago. If you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything at all. So I'm not going to say anything, and especially because I also know that there's one or two people that are supporters of my own band. Uh, one lady in particular that actually goes to these things, so I don't want to, I don't want to put her in a bad bracket. So I'm not going to say anything. You know, I, like I said last week, I'm not going to tell anyone how to spend their money. If that's what you want to do, and if that's what makes you happy, more power to you. And as long as people are going to these and paying that kind of money, he's going to continue to have events like this and have these prices that are just going to be jaw dropping to people. So yeah. 
from Ronnie the outside, makes... um, but, but from the outside, it it looks like he kind of rips sure. them off. I think for sure. So you 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 almost want to tell the people, but can't you see? I mean, he's offering just about nothing for you. He just wants your money. Can't you see this? But uh, I don't know. I think it's you get, all very you get great strange. food. You get great food. Pinwheels, yeah. or or crockpot stuff, you know, and and that's a fan doing it. So I'm not going to denigrate yeah, a menu made by a fan for fellow fans anymore, yeah. you know. And Lonnie made a point, you know, the event took place for Vinny. That's that's a pretty good thing. It took place, and people mm -hmm. are going. So uh, again, I thought Mark was going to say that his mom was going to. Uh, mom told him, "You should do this." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Why I should do it like this. <laughs> so, so there we go with that. Hey, Tales of a Kiss Geek, thanks for joining. Michael from Denmark, always. Thank you for joining. Half Face. Um, uh, Scam Batty. <laughs> Who's that? <All> right. <laughs> Him. Him. Bam. Okay. Um, so what other news? Well, I kicked off season two, finally, of the Kiss FAQ Song Story series. I'd originally done 10 episodes in 2021, which are just audio biographies for songs in the catalog. It was when I was uh, starting to update the Kiss and Related Recordings focus. I thought, why not do it audio-wise so it just be a little uh, standalone podcast and try and keep the episodes to 15 minutes. So I did uh, the fifth episode today, recorded it and put it together. It ended up being, I think, 25 five minutes uh, Ooh, which good. is a little bit longer than i thought for um you know just talking about a single song in history so the first episode went up last sunday what was it mark watching you okay thanks because yeah. i can't remember and i don't want to give away uh obviously five are ready to go um and they'll debut on sundays and i got five mm -hmm. more to write i uh, just did a ten, 10 episode cool. series they are excellent. I have to say, the series last year that you did was fantastic. I, I've listened to them numerous times. And when I saw that one go up with, for watching you there, I was extremely excited and looking forward to the rest of them. Thanks. Just, and, th th and thanks to everyone who's commented about those on the board and also on, on the YouTube page and uh, the iTunes. I do appreciate anyone who gives me any time to listen to my shit. It, it means a lot. So thank you for your time. Hopefully you'll enjoy the series. Daniel? I do have a question uh, regarding the, the watching you episode. I mean, you're, you've been pretty restrictive when it comes to adding sound bites and, uh, you know, from Kiss songs and so on when we do the the, the Kiss FAQ podcast. But during this episode, you, you had quite a few sound bites from different versions of watching you. So, so how's your thinking when it comes to adding that kind of stuff? Well, those are something that I would never, ever monetize in any manner so i kind of don't care um okay. that they get copyright dings and universal and other publishers take their cut of those being you know broadcast on various platforms so i'm just doing those for shits and giggles when i okay. do our podcast i like to keep all of that music out because i never know if i'm going to get a ding on yeah. content until after True. i've put them up so because they are documentary i'm keeping them 100 percent unmonetized by me so that i can actually use the fr uh, the fair use doctrine uh, for whatever it's worth and say you guys take all the money so okay um, then I, I get you andrew i don't owe you 10 bucks it's joe and i'm still waiting for him to tell me how to send him <laughs> that 10 bucks been waiting for days um so I don't want him mad at me. I don't want anyone mad at me. All right. So let's get into today's death match. Hotter than hell. Animal Eyes. Lonnie, how do you see this one going? Any chance Animal Eyes songs win? You know, we do these and we always think, oh, it's so lopsided. It's so lopsided. But then, you know, three or four or sometimes five of songs from um, the album we think is lesser sneak through. And all this depends on matchups and... You know, I listened to both albums this morning, and you know, I think there there will be some animalized songs that that'll that'll upset some hotter than hell songs for sure. Ken, what about you? Yeah, I, I listened yesterday uh, to to both albums, and uh, I, I agree with Lonnie. There's there's definitely some uh, good standout songs on Animalized that that could uh, overtake some hotter than hell songs. So we'll see what happens. All right, let's see if Mark can show CDs and talk at the same time. Well, I'm done showing them, so. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I, I think that. Uh, <laughs> the answers no. 
<laughs> I am Gemini. I should be able to do it with no problems, but I, I don't want to take a chance there. Uh, but the thing is, I, I think that I think the same way is kind of like Lonnie does. You know, we always think that okay, this is going to be a no-brainer. Hotter than hell is going to be a complete landslide victory, but it never ends up being that way because there's always some sort of odd, you know, matchup, and then a couple of those, of the songs from the other album get through somehow. So. Uh, I, I don't know what to think. I, I'm, my natural instinct is that I think Hotter Than Hell will do very well, but we'll see, right? All right, Daniel, what about you? Any chance? Hell yeah. I mean, um, at least th three of us are hardcore 80s Kiss fans, or maybe we were at least introduced to the band in the 80s. So I think some of these songs may hold a soft spot in our hearts. So I think I'm hoping three or four songs from Animal Eyes getting through to the next round. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see how this one pans out. So this is simple. We put all the songs from Animal Eyes in the Red Cup. I deliberately used the Red Cup because Gene's songs suck on that album. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah. And the rest oh, in, from Hotter Than Hell go into the green. We shake them up and we're going to match them up. And then the songs that win are going to go through into the next round, into the Pink Cup. And the one extra, because there are nine songs on Animal Eyes and mm -hmm. ten We'll go into a white cup for a runoff to join the pink ones. Does that all make sense? No, it doesn't. So let's just jump right in. First matchup, first song up coming out of the animalized jar is going to be Under the Gun. Woohoo! Off to a good start. It's gonna go up against something like Parasite. Let's see. Should I have shut up? Going blind versus oh. Under the Gun. That's not going to be a very nice matchup. <laughs> so let's start with Ken. He loves Gene songs. Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, and I do especially do like Going Blind. Uh, though I like the, you know, the, the unplugged version better than the studio, uh, the How to in Hell. But hi, Hanukkah. I've always, I've always liked that song. Um, and Under the Gun, I think, is one of the, Probably Paul's uh, the, his least, you know, whatever, best or my least favorite Paul song on Animal Eyes. Um, uh, Under the Guns, kind of another attempt to do one of these fast kind of rocking songs where he's he did that for like three albums in a row, um, kind of copying, uh, you know. Judas Priest or or whatever style of some of these newer bands. So uh, I, I go with Going Blind. I, I think it's a classic. Um, it kind of became a classic probably due to Unplugged. Um, but uh, I've always liked the song. I think it's really good. Hey, Hanukkah and Limerick City. Thanks for watching and tuning in to the Kiss FAQ podcast. You're awesome. Yes. Hi, Hanukkah. Uh, Mark. Um. This is an interesting uh, sort of matchup because what I was thinking about this time around is that if I think about it just from a song perspective, it would go one way. But uh, to make this fair for future things when I'm, when I'm involved with this, I'm going to think about it from just the album version alone. And with that way thinking, I'm going to have to go with Under the Gun because as much as I think Going Blind is not a bad song, but it just doesn't sound good at all on this record. It just sounds terrible on this album. It sounds like somebody threw a blanket over the speakers when they recorded this. It's just, just so muddy sounding. This this song just terrible. That's the and, whole album. Well, yeah, yeah. But some songs, some songs sound better with it than others. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is one of those songs that doesn't sound that great because you know this has acoustic guitar and some other uh -huh. things in there, and those things need clarity. <clears throat> and that's one thing you wouldn't associate with this album is clarity. But, uh, you know, and I'll agree with Ken, <clears throat> Under the Gun is not the, you know, the, the greatest song that Paul's ever written. But I think overall it's, it's, it's aggressive. It's pretty in your face. It sounds good. And, and in comparison to that, when I kind of do my little side-by-side -side comparison, I, I kind of find Under the Gun would catch my attention a little bit longer. So I'm going to go with Under the Gun. Yeah, clearly going blind needed Bob Ezrin. Uh, Lonnie. <laughs> <laughs> oh god um <laughs> wow I, I i agree with mark and that and that you know unplugged kind of gave new life to yeah. to going blind where it's previously you know i didn't listen to it as much but i 
I I do like the song, um, and it, it, it made me appreciate it a whole lot. Um, and it's 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 tough, but I, I am going to go with with Under the Gun. I think it is a better overall song. I mean, very, I mean, two two very extreme songs that you would you would hard to imagine that the same band performs both of these songs. They're so yeah. vastly different from one yeah. another. But at the same time, very good songs, and you can appreciate both of them. Um, but but I will go with Under the Gun. I think that it's just overall better, uh, especially focus, focusing on, on album versions of the songs. Yeah, nice. Uh, so, Under the Gun. And that means Daniel... Yeah, um, I really, I never noticed Going Blind until I heard it on MTV. I think it was in 94 on that Most Wanted show mm -hmm. when Gene and Paul showed up just with a, a bass and an acoustic guitar and it sounded mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, uh, so that was my favorite version of the song until the next year when, when or two years after uh, when, when MTV Unplugged was released and then it sounded even better. So it's actually probably my favorite song off of Hotter Than Hell, but the studio version, exactly like Mark put it, I mean, it sucks. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> awful. I just, as you guys, I just listened to both albums this, um, this morning. And uh, first I listened to Under the Gun and it sounded really good still to this day. And Going Blind was just a mess. So uh, I have to, I actually have to go with Under the, the Gun. I, th I think some people look this, look, look, look past this song a bit too fast because they just think it's the fast song, but there's a lot in this song that, that is pretty good. I, mean, I know uh, Paul's voice, of course, he sounds great. Uh, there's also small snippets of Eric Carr in the song. That's really nice to hear his voice, you know, during the fire thing there. Yeah. And, uh, and Carr's really into the song when it comes to the drumming. Uh, uh, I like the breakdown, you know, when you can hear sort of a mini Eric Carr solo. And also Mark St. John is hot in, 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 this, in this song. You know, the ending is classic Mark St. John much like the intro to the first song on the album he does this fiddly 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 whoop but it sounds mm -hmm. great and really suits the song it's perfect for the song so um under the gun for me i know some people won't like it but that's my favorite when it comes to the studio versions yeah this is a tough one and my my vote is irrelevant because you guys have made under the gun um the winner so so far but 80s fan for me under under the gun but going blind is such a good song but it doesn't sound good until foundations forum when they're there yeah. that powerhouse lineup kicks its ass <laughs> live and then on you know um mtv unplugged in the convention era it was absolutely spectacular then it really had its character especially when the additional verse came back in once it sounds good it's a it's a fantastic song it's really fun you know people get a bit you know a revisionist creeped out by the i'm 93 you're 16 that paul <laughs> contributed to the song but i don't care but because i'm an 80s guy i love you know when i got those animalized work tapes with the raw roughs mm -hmm. of under the gun it was so fun to hear the isolation of um, eric's vocals mark's guitar work uh, really cool shit. great song for the time it's a little bit dated but i still love listening to that album and listening to that song so I, i'm with you ken you're obviously the only i i just gotta say i would you. never i would never say man i really need to go listen to under the gun today never <laughs> i i would i would i i would, I would, I would be like i want to hear that song today. <laughs> all right here we go next thank you that would have you sucked if I just poured down, uh, you know, all the songs out of the cup down the side of my <laughs> desk in the middle of a show. Oh, <laughs> all right. So here we go. A shit sandwich. Which song? Mm. Lonely is the Hunter. Mm. Oh, boy. It's going to go up against. <laughs> Ken's always the voice of reason. Oh, this is a cool matchup. Lonely the Hunter versus Coming Home. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. All right. Let's start with Mark on that one. <laughs> um, wow, Th this is going to be a bit tougher because 
while my original sort of frame of thinking is going to be here again with this, where coming home is one of those songs where even Daniel mentioned, you know, the MTV unplugged coming home, got a whole new breath of life into that song when that was done there. And it's, it's one of the best songs I think on that whole performance for sure. I, I was so, you know, surprised at how good that song sounded unplugged. But on this album, it just sounds, again, not good at all. I mean, the acoustic guitar is buried. The drums and the guitars in there just don't sound good at all on this album um, version. But Lonely is the Hunter, again, while sonically it might sound better, it's just a bad song. I mean, just not good. It's just terrible. Like, I don't, the one thing I don't understand about this album is that. Gene is on here as a, as a producer as, along with Paul. Now, I know Gene is just there in name only as producer mm -hmm. and Paul's there, but I mean, come on, Paul. I mean, really, did this Gene didn't have anything even slightly better than that to contribute to this album. This song is terrible. Mm -hmm. And for that reason only, I'm going to go with Coming Home because while it sonically sounds terrible, it is better song overall than that. I mean, no matter how bad it sounds on record, I'd still rather listen to Coming Home than listen to Lonely as the Hunter. Nice. All right. Um, so what was your pick? Coming Home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lonnie, Come fail, it, make, don't make me think. You know, sounds I, think I think Mark make, makes, makes a good point where, um, you know, com, Coming Home, is, is it's not a great version on there. Um, although it is a great song. Um. Lonely, the, Lonely is the Hunter is not a good song at all. So, um, yeah, it, it, it has to be coming home because it, Lonely the Hunter is just not good. I, how, how does I, I'm with you? How does how does that make it on the album? And you know some of the stuff that we've heard, you know, off the vault and things like that, you know, yeah. just get thrown away. So. It, and it's a, it's 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 really a, kind of a crime at the end of the day that that certain songs like that aren't that songs like this make the album and other songs don't. So um, it's definitely coming home for me. Easy choice. All right, Daniel. Uh, at times, I almost think that Paul enjoys it when Gene, you know, makes bad songs because it makes him look better on the album. <laughs> it, it would really surprise me. But uh, so if if Gene makes a bad song, come on, Gene, that's good enough. Let's do it. But the problem with 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 not only the hunter is. Well, there are many problems, but one I think is the lazy drums. It seems like a demo almost, a demo that has been, you know, left a lot like a, a lot of stuff on Hard in the Shade. They could have done so much more with the drums. If you compare uh, Under the Gun that we talked about previously and uh, this one or any of the Paul songs and this one, it's such a different difference in, in the drumming. So uh, it's slow, nothing really happens. So you have to pick the other one, even though it sounds like crap on on, on Harder Than Hell. It's still more listenable than than Lonely Is the Hunter. All so right. coming home, Julian. Coming home is my pick. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, no. all right, Ken. Just just so you know, these guys have already voted uh, coming home through. So you can go with your inner gene and um, just you know you, you you can do it now. Okay. Actually, I've always said on this show that I like Lily as a hunter. I just think it has a cool riff, you know, in it. And yeah, That's the funny. the the uh, the chorus is not the greatest chorus, and you know, obviously, uh, but I've always kind of enjoyed that song. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd almost say a tie. But Daniel picked up on something about the the Paul thing, and and you know, kind of getting Gene back. Uh, and I, that was always been my theory, where he's gonna he's gonna make himself look better than Gene, no matter what. And if he's that when running the show, he's gonna pick he's not gonna pick a better song from Gene than his own. So, um, <laughs> having said that, um, Gene should have see if Gene was smart though, instead of giving Paul fifty songs to go through so Paul can choose the lesser ones. Pick just bring only like five, not, not top notch of your mm. songs and give those to Paul. Then you know the least of those are probably going to be pretty, pretty dang good. Still. Because he so, can't because he can't judge which the top five are out of those fifty. He can, he can judge the top the bottom five. That's the problem. 
anyway, <laughs> yeah. um, not the 50, but anyway, uh, I, I have to say, since you guys always all picked that, I'm just going to say tie because it's it's kind of even for me. We They're can't both kind of tie. Good. Okay, I'll, I'll, okay, all right. I'm going to go with Lonely <laughs> as a Hunter because I never really liked coming home on Otter Hill. It, it, again, that's another one that came, you know, uh, much better when it uh, was on, you know, unplugged. Um, that's when I first appreciated it. Before that, I never really appreciated that song at all. Well, I did appreciate it on Hotter Than Hell. I actually liked how it sounded on there. Um, Coming Home is easy. I actually don't hate Lonely as a Hunter. Um, but come on, Coming Home? Forget it. Uh, it's not even a not even a, a thought for me. All right, let's go. with the, Let's pick one out of the Hotter Than Hell jar next. Oh, yeah, by the way, Coming Home is the winner. Yes. Like, <laughs> No, we're not, we're not getting firebombed. All right, got to choose. <coughs> Isn't that a humble pie song? Probably. Ding. Versus. Having a fire. Mark. <laughs> Shuffle. Oh. Oh. Nah, get all you can take. Okay, good. Uh, mm. All right, get versus choose. Lonnie, lead us off. Get all you can take versus got to choose it's got to choose i mean although it although it's not my favorite version of the song it seems like we're echoing this a lot with with hotter than hell that these songs are not our favorite versions of these songs um got to choose is a very very excellent song it's one of my favorites and um it's better than get all you can get all you can take is fine um very very 80s sounding and and very very dated when you listen to it as as are a lot of the songs on Animalize are very dated when you listen to them now um but got to choose is really really good i mean it's excellent and there's a reason why it's the lead song on the album um there's a reason why it was a staple in the set list for so long in the 70s um it's a great song it's one of my favorites easy pick yep daniel um uh, I'm not sure if I agree with 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 um, Lani on "Got to Choose." I think it's a real slow song on "Harder Than Hell." Um, I think the high pitched vocals from Gene destroys the, the chorus. It's too high for him, much like when he was singing "Unholy Live." It didn't really work. So, the studio ver version of that one, I don't really care for at all. But um, it's still better than. Get All You Can Take, which is my least favorite Paul song off of Animal Eyes. Uh, however, I'm hoping Got to Choose get, uh, uh, goes down in the second round. Ooh. What was your vote? Got to Choose? Yeah, I have to pick that one. Okay, because you said, I did listen, that uh, Get All You Can Take is your least favorite Paul song off Animal Eyes, and I agree with you. Got to Choose. Ken? <laughs> uh... Yeah, it's gonna be. I uh, got to choose. Um, though I do like, I do like. Get all you can take. That's the first song I think Kiss ever uh, swore on record. Is that true? Is I think so. I Burn, like, bitch, so, burn. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's, I guess you could say that. So, so if, it's an order. If, yeah. Which song came first on the album, right? Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. That, I guess both songs. It's the first album that they really, you know, swore on. I think because that kind of stuck out, stood out to me when I first heard that album. I was like, "What they're swearing? They're swearing now? What's going on?" So, I'm trying to be more, uh, I don't know, yeah, some modern. Like yeah, so yeah, uh, "Got to Choose" is a, is a really really great song. That's why it's you know leading off the album. Okay, well that was easy, uh, Mark. Yeah, so um, this is one of the examples where I think that this sort of muddy sound maybe plays a little bit better into the hands of Got to Choose here. Uh, it, it, it's, it doesn't bother me as much, this version of the song. It's still not the best version. I, mean, I think still the Alive version is much better than this. But <clears throat> I think this version of it doesn't really bother me as much. Uh, overall, it's a great song. I mean, it's one of those songs that when I first started playing guitar, and was you know learning kiss songs this was the one that i was kind of like yeah i gotta learn this one picked up the guitar and started learning it and uh 
you know, th th there's nothing wrong with uh, get all you can take, but really to me, it's it's a very vanilla song for Paul. It's just nothing too fancy about it. Nothing too, and especially vocally, it's not anything that's too impressive on Paul's end. I mean, he has so many uh, better examples of his singing on Animal Lies than this song. And if you have a strong vocal from Paul, that usually makes the song that much better. So I'm going to go with Got to Choose, but I'll tell you one thing, a tip for all you listeners out there. If you want to hear an even better version of it, get the Japanese black OV pressing, the, the 1980 one, I think it was, from Polystar. That pressing of it has a little bit more top end, not as much bottom end to it, at least on my system when I listen to it. So it makes it even that much more clear. So get the Japanese vinyl. It sounds really good. Okay. So yeah. nice for Mark. Pay, pay thirty dollars shipping to. Anyway. <laughs> well, if you if you're a big fan, <laughs> you're lucky. Yeah. yeah, I know. Next song coming out of the animalized jar is going to be murder. In oh, high heels. High heels. <laughs> oh, enough again. Everybody just go. <laughs> <laughs> Mainline. That's an interesting matchup. Hmm. Daniel, hmm. Mainline versus Murder. Uh, mainline, uh, I think it's a pretty fun pop song. Nothing special, but it's still cool to hear Peter Chris's vocals. I mean, they're great on this song. Uh, and the other one, Murder in High Heels. Uh, I never really cared for the, for, for, for that riff. But Is that Murder in High Heels? <laughs> Or is that while the city yeah. sleeps? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're right. That's murder and heels. <laughs> it's supposed to be this mean song, but it sounds like some cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just that's just terrible. And then murder in high heels. Well, I don't know if it does very they don't gel that good. The cartoonish sound and the murder in high no. It just doesn't work. I don't know what the heck he was thinking. And the title is stolen from some old movie. That's not very uncommon when it comes to Gene, but mm. hmm, have to go with the Harder Than Hell song. Thank God. Uh, Mark? <laughs> yeah, um, again, this song is a, one of those songs that, again, I find that the production of it doesn't really hurt it too much. Um, it's, it's like Daniel said, it's a very upbeat sort of fun song to it again hearing peter sing always a welcome thing especially back at this time period when he has such a fantastic voice you know uh and you know murder in high heels i think from the time that i've owned this record i think i might have heard it maybe five times i think i've always stopped the cd well before it gets to that song because i've just never enjoyed it at all uh main main line is one of those songs that i think that you know, I'm glad that it was on there. I'm glad they let Peter sing it because I know Paul was kind of, you know, adamant at first that he wanted to sing it, but uh, I'm glad they let Peter sing it. I, I think it's a good song. It's not the greatest song, but again, sounds good, a lot better than some of the other songs turned out on there. So I'm going to go with that main line. All right, Ken. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of difficult. I, I think I like Peter's vocals on Mainline. Uh, Mainline might be my least favorite song on Out of Hell. Um, but Murder in, <laughs> uh, in High Heels is not too great. So, I, I yeah, I'm, got, I'm just going to have to give it to Mainline because I think it's a it's just a better written song. I think Murder in High Heels is kind of like th those two last songs are really not finished in my opinion, for Gene, he needed to work on the course for both of those songs. So. Agreed. Watch the process of turning Ken into a Gene hater live. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> little by little. Oh, yes. Trying. Brainwash me. Yeah. All right, Lonnie. Oh, well, I think it's real simple. And that main line is a fun song. And Murder in High Hills is, is not. So, I mean, really, mainline nicely. It is. Main, mainline's fun and catchy, 
And and murder in high heels is just it's just like, oh well we have to throw something on to to round out the album. We'll just throw this kind of unfinished goofy song or gene where it's a it's typical gene song where you know gene just comes up with a title of a song oh i like the title of that song murder in high heels and then we can't really mesh it all together properly but i still like the title of a song called murder in high heels so here it is um there's really not much comparison mainline is just fun and it's classic kiss sounding with those raspy peter vocals it's just a you know a song you look forward to when you're when you're listening to high note so it's easy yeah danny <laughs> sigelman has a good point what any thoughts on what if vinnie had stayed in the band for animalize well songs mm-hmm. like murder in high heels would be a damn sight better lyrically um <laughs> it's totally, because, totally different album yeah, yeah you know murder because high heels would be on the album <laughs> Gene, yeah. yeah well gene's songs benefited a lot from vinnie's could have benefited a lot from vinnie's input you yeah know, because once paul was using desmond child um you know he needed more help and yeah. murder in high heels is an example i actually i agree with um you know g hurley you know good tune uh good riff tune not so much and right. it is a, i actually like it musically but it just doesn't you know, go anywhere further. Mm-hmm. So, uh, where was that comment? There you go. The voice of treason. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's a good one. But, Michael. But I, I really like Mainline. Again, Peter vocals, you don't have enough of, and it's a fun, you know, catchy <laughs> pop song. So, that's unanimous across the. I, I got you, Mark, right? Yes. Yeah, I can, yeah, I, I lose track of myself here. So thank God the main line goes through murder and high heels. Uh, well, it's backbone slips. All right. <laughs> here we go. Next song up. Let me go rock and roll or baby. Let mm-hmm. me go. So it was known in 1973 performed 50 years ago, nearly to the day as we approach Kiss's official 50th birthday party with that first show at the Coventry is going to go up against I've had enough into the fire Mm. fire yeah yeah fire Mm. all right so oh I get to go first now um duh let me go rock and roll I love I've had enough into the fire that's a great example of Mark's (laughs) guitar work as well again going back to those animalized work tapes getting to listen to just some of the vocals uh, when it's a scat and Mark trying to figure out some of the guitar parts his guitar playing fit some of the stuff that Paul was uh, writing at the time Um, and his playing was certainly you know going up against the George Lynch's and uh you know, Warren D. Martini type playing that was yeah. popular at the time. So bashing him after the fact as a buzzing bee is not fair or appropriate when you've got this song as evidence, but it's not going to win against Let Me Go Rock and Roll. No way, no how. Uh, I, I, I ain't going there. Ken? Yeah. Um, <laughs> they didn't call Rock and Roll such a great song, and, you know, they, and they, they play it to this day. Um, in concert, and uh, I love their long jam on it. Um, in concert, too, and they do that, so it's it's total rock and roll, total rock and roll type style riffing, you know, goes back to Chuck Berry, that kind of stuff. Um, even though, yeah, I, I do like uh, Paul's song, lead off song, it's great, um, but uh, it's it's it, it doesn't match up to uh, Let Me Go Rock and Roll. I just think Let Me Go Rock and Roll is just great. Great song. Well, I, you know, I, I probably didn't like it when I first listened to it, first time I listened to it. But after a few times listening to it, 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 it you know, it would get better and better. Especially the live version, of course, is great. Yeah, so let me go rock and roll. Let me, yeah, let me go. Yeah, because I, I'm just looking at the comments, you know, Chad, um, Rodrigo are, you know, throwing love to Animalize, probably because the sound on that first uh, on the album doesn't compare with how good the song is on Alive. And that's and that's a difficult thing to get out of your heads. Lonnie. Yeah, it is difficult because, you know, r- rarely do I, like, if I'm going to listen to Let Me Go Rock and Roll, it's not the Hotter Than Hell version of, of Let Me Go Rock and Roll. Like, no way. like basically ever. But um, 
it's still a superior song to um, I've Had Enough Into the Fire. Although, although, although I've Had Enough is, is a really good song, and it really showcases Mark St. John as the lead track on Animalize and kind of gives you a direction for how that album is going to go um, from the jump. But, and, it, and it's, it's, I mean, that is, it is difficult, but let me go rock and roll. It's just such a classic Kiss song. And it's, like Ken said, it's still a staple in the set list. It's, you know, Julian said, you know, they performed it almost 50 years ago to the day. I mean, and they were still performing it now. It's so, it's, and it's that good. So it, it's difficult. It's kind of hard for me, but I, I am going to go, let me go rock and roll. All right, Daniel. <laughs> this, this one is easy. It's, uh, I've had enough into the fire all the way. Uh, I think the studio version of Let Me Go Rock and Roll, is it really a complete song? How long is it? Is it two minutes? I mean, I yeah. mean it's over two minutes. Is it two minutes? When something. I start, yeah, it doesn't hit so, three minutes. The album. Yeah. You're so used to the, you know, the, the, the long version that they did live, and that's awesome. Like Ken said, that's an awesome version, and and you and they play it to to this day. But if if they would play this version, I don't think it would last. I mean, it's so short. Just when they get started, it ends. Uh, so it's a great idea for a song, but I think they did, didn't manage to to capture it on on Hotter Than Hell. On the other hand, I've had enough into the fire. It's probably the best song on on Animalize. Whose dog uh, is barking? Uh, isn't it yours? Freaking neighbor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the intro, of course, is very cool. It's a perfect example of what Mark St. John could do to a song when he was, you know, in top shape. And and uh, the main riff is absolutely one of my favorites. And it's been copied lately by by um, this hot band in you know Sweden that actually opened for Kiss called Nestor. They've copied that that riff uh, um, lyrics. I really like the lyrics. The vocals, awesome. And once again, I have to mention Eric Carr's drumming. He's really getting crazy on the on the hi hat in this one. I love it. Uh, he go. completely stops at times, stops playing, and then he goes full force with the double kick drum. The bridge is cool with Paul showing, you know, his singing abilities. And uh, I think actually Mark's solo really fits the song, and the ending is perfect. Another one of of the perfect Paul songs on, on Animal Eye. So I'm so sad it didn't even go on to round number two and if you haven't heard there's a pretty cool cover by a band called burning point that was released a year or two ago that you can go and check out if if you if you want to hear some a new take on on i've had enough into the fire so my pick is the animalized tune but it really doesn't matter no it doesn't unfortunately no sorry <laughs> <laughs> which guys. means that which means that mark your your opinion it matters but it doesn't well i'm gonna say the same thing that i was gonna say even if it didn't make a difference and that is i am so disappointed that rock that this lost to let me go rock and roll because honestly as much as everybody's trying to say that it's still a better song everybody here i'm convinced are still thinking about the version that they hear when they listen yeah. to a live because you. if you were to come, if you were to really listen to it from this version, which is yeah. to, to answer Daniel's question, it is two minutes and fourteen seconds on no, the I album. See. Okay, mm. so the, this song, it, this version of it is not the rock and roll. Let me go rock and roll that everybody is gaga over. Um, we're we're thinking about the one that with the big you know jam at the end. You know we see the confetti flying when Gene does the do 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 bit all there. That's the cool. Let me go rock and roll that we all know and love. This is just utter nothing to me. I mean, honestly, I've had enough. Is so much better a song in True. this version, studio to studio version. I mean, it's, it's, there's a better guitars. There's better everything in this. The vocals are better in it. You know, uh, yes, I know it, it's a classic song. Let me go, let me go rock and roll, but it, it does. It's not as good when we compare studio to studio albums on here. And so rather than get long winded about it, because it doesn't matter anyways, it's still lost, but I, I am disappointed that it lost because when we're talking about studio records, this song is much better than "Let Me Go Rock and Roll." See, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't agree with that 
because I will listen to the studio version of that song and I will pick it over, um, you know, even a, even a tough pick like that any day because it's fun. Even if it's two, two minutes and 14 versus the alive version, that's a super I just think condensed well, I, I just think that it just doesn't have enough meat in it. The, the long version has the meat. It has the other parts. It has the there's a flow the and there's like a different, thing, the base. yeah yeah there's other there's, there it keeps it interesting this is just such a short in and out song and great maybe that maybe that's what you like about it julian maybe that's the thing that appeals to you maybe it's it's a quick song it's in and out it's you know in two minutes it does everything that you're interested in the song and you're happy you know but for me i i think that i'm more satisfied musically with with the, what, what uh, into the fire has to offer to be honest in and out for two minutes. That's not very good. <laughs> that's what, that's what she said. <laughs> and being satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> All that right. Not meant like that's that. the extra, extra. Uh, <laughs> let me just say the extra length of, <laughs> of oh, the no. song. Oh, wow. oh, oh wow, yeah. Length of the song sure. <laughs> in live. Mm. It's is, not about is, length. Just, it's just embellished it a little bit more. It, it was already a great song. Great song. It just made it even better, you know, than it was even. Well, now that we've gone to PG-13 rating for this <laughs> episode. <laughs> All right. Next up, Strange Ways. And if oh, you're going to tell me that that sludgy, Sabbathy song doesn't sound good. Oh, the production the is horrible. Yeah. Tell that's a Black Sabbath first album. Um, <laughs> it is going to be dropped. Hold these up. Oh shit! While the city sleeps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mo moving on to the next pick. Oh, no, right. let's let's go. go. Ken, <laughs> you, you get an opportunity to again so, save Gene. So strange honor. ways against while the while city the city sleeps. sleeps. All right. All right. I'll just get, I'll keep it uh, nice and concise. Uh, yeah, strange ways. Great, great tune. Either way, it's a great tune on on the uh, on Father in Hell. Yeah, the, the production could have been better, but it's still a great, great song. Um, and the the Gene song is is one of his more, as we know, kind of a throwaway type songs that Paul purposely chose. Yeah, <laughs> stand that ragging on Paul the day after his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Birthday's over, Paul. <laughs> Back to reality. Yeah. Clear, clearly. So uh you're going with all the city sleeps? No. <laughs> Lonnie. Uh, you know, I to echo something Ken said earlier. I don't think I've ever said, ooh, I gotta listen to while the city sleeps. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> True. So it's it's and, but I have said, ooh, I really won't feel like listening to strange ways today. So it is easily strange ways. It's not even a it's not even a comparison. Daniel. I think Strange Ways is um, the perfect song on Harder Than Hell. When you, when you w look on that cover, it's kind of dark and uh, and it looks dangerous. And Strange Ways to me is kind of a dark song. And, and um, uh, I think it fits the album. And it, I remember Eric Singer, when he joined the band, he always talked about Strange Ways being one of his favorite songs. And I, I do enjoy Peter Chris's drumming on this one. He uses the toms a whole lot. Uh, in the mm -hmm. beginning, and and he works the toms a lot in, in this song, and the lyrics, uh, to me, they are kind of dark and go go hand in hand with with the way the song sounds. And it's even though it's a slow song, it's a heavy song. And uh, Peter Chris, of course, his vocals. Are, once again, we've talked about it earlier. Uh, they are great. When he shouts out, "I can set you free," I think he screams at one point. It sounds awesome, mm -hmm. and. Um, Ace, when when you when Ace does an interview, he always uh, mentioned the solo from Strange Ways as being one of his favorite solos mm -hmm. in Kiss, and I agree. I think it's a great solo. So, Strange Ways is a really complete, great Kiss song. And uh, actually, the muddy production on Harder Than Hell is okay for this song. I think uh, uh, so. So I can go and watch uh, and listen to the studio version. The other piece of crap that you mentioned from Animal Eyes, I don't, don't even remember what it was called. Was it While the City Sleeps? Yeah, I think it was that one. And it's just, well, I think it's one of his worst songs, Gene, on the album. So 
my pick goes to the Holland and Hell song. You could just see Paul going, Ooh, we're going to put this on the album. It's really <laughs> bad. You guys hear how bad this song is? Yeah, yeah this is Gene. Uh, all right, Mark, does the muddy production on Hotter Than Hell work well with Strange Ways? And what's your vote for this one? The, this is one of the best examples of where this production works beautifully with a song. Yeah. That this works really nicely with it. Sounds good. I mean, if they if they started recording the album with this song, then maybe I could understand how it ended up that way because they thought to themselves, oh, this sounds great. Let's just keep going. You know what I mean? But, you know, still, uh, it's it's a great song. All the points that Daniel pretty much brought up in his discussion of it, I echo. I mean, it's a great song. Peter's vocals are great. Uh, the guitar solo is fantastic. Peter's vocals, you know, uh, just there's nothing about this song that I dislike. The only thing that I find about this song strange is that they never played it much live. I mean, could you imagine a, a version of this on a live if they would have did it for something like that during that time period? That, that would have been probably one of the more talked about songs for sure. I mean, people love this song on the studio version. Could you imagine a live version of this? Probably would have been fantastic. And I'm going to echo somebody on the message board here said something. Uh, yes, AB. I have zero memories of hearing Well the City Sleeps. <laughs> like ever and that to me is the same with me I, I couldn't probably tell you three notes of how that song goes I, i've listened to it so little uh and it's just because it's not very memorable i mean the, that's the problem with gene during this time period he, his, his music was just so like mailed in it was just so terrible like what was he thinking during this time period anyways it doesn't matter we we talked about that a hundred times but my vote goes to you know strange ways easily yeah strange ways with, for the unanimous pick i would love to hear a 74 75 recording of them playing the song live at that time I, I don't think i've ever heard one um i can't think of one anyway you never played it live ever right no they did early, early 75 it was mentioned in a review hmm. at one show but i don't oh, think right. any recordings have ever surfaced it didn't go over well yeah look at look it up in the book <laughs> <laughs> there you go Daniel. All right, so Strange Ways moves on. Should have done on the cruise. There we go. Thrills in the shite. Oh, okay. Good night. night. Okay. Versus. Not Parasite, not Parasite, not Parasite. All the way. That's okay, it. Good. Mm. That's a pretty mediocre matchup, in my opinion. And we're going to start with Lonnie. All the way. I really like All the Way. Um, always have. It's just like a, like a buried song on Hot Up in Hell that's really, really good. Um, and then they whipped it out in 04 and played it on that Rock the Nation tour. And it's really sounded good live, in my opinion. <laughs> And, but they only played it a couple of times because I think most people in the audience are like, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. But, Lonnie's but the only one I, cheering. Yeah. But I would have, like, <laughs> shit my pants, they would have played that live. You know what I mean? So I, uh, well, Throws in the Night's good. It, it's kind of catchy. Um, I think All the Way is a very underrated song. It's it's really, really good. It just sounds like classic Kiss type stuff. Gene's <laughs> Gene's vocals on it are, are fantastic. Um, those are the nights fine. It's probably going to get some votes out of, the, out of you guys, but um, for me, it's all the way. Mm. Ken? Yeah, I agree with Lonnie. Uh, all the ways. Just a great, I've always loved that song. Um, really cool song. It's kind of like a deep, in a way, it's a, one of those great deep cuts for Kiss. Mm -hmm. That you don't really think about sometimes and uh, but I've, I've always loved it um yeah and it's great live of course but uh i do you know it's, it's sad because i do love thrills in the night i think that's a great song i would just I always thought it was a great cool song a well-written song just really good uh, one of the better songs on the whole whole album so but it, it gets all the way no you know no way against all the way <laughs> 
what person doesn't like thrills in the night, even if it's only two minutes and 14 seconds of it? Uh, Mark. Yeah. What? Um, uh, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> quality, honestly, that quantity. I, I think that uh, I'm going to go with uh, All the Way, because honestly, uh, that's one of those songs that I had to echo what Lonnie said. It's, it's a deep cut and one that I've really loved since the first time I've heard it. I mean, I'll never forget the first time hearing that count in one, two, three, four, bam, bam, and that little do -do -do -do, and the cowboy was like, wow, this is cool. And it was it had such a good vibe to it, you know? And even Gene's vocals in it, I thought were pretty good. He has a good attitude to it. You know, the snarl in his vocal, like, you got a lot to say. Like the way he sings that is really good, I thought, on there. Uh, I do like thrills in the night i thought it was a good song but in comparison to this i find it kind of drags though it's like du, 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 du. it's kind of like kind of like mm -hmm. feels like it's going through mud a little bit and it kind of it kind of stays a little too mid-tempo-ish for me that song in comparison where i find all the ways a little bit more upbeat a little bit more gets my foot going whereas i don't know i think thrills in the night while it's a decent song it's just it's a little plotting for me. So I'm going to go with all, all the way. Daniel. Um, all the way. There's really nothing that grabs me in that song. And I I know we, me and Mark, we've, we've had the same opinion on many of these songs. But yes. this, time we're, this time we're completely mm -hmm. different <laughs> opinions because you talked about the first riff and that's what turns me off with this song. <laughs> du, du. Do, 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 do. Oh, click click cowbell oh my lord what is this is it the first is it the first time they picked up their instruments what the hell are they doing so uh all the way my <clears throat> least favorite on hotter than hell by wow. far it's my least favorite i never liked it i never cared for it i hate the intro riff i think it's one of their worst on the other hand thrills in the night is perfect eight is she's uh I love it. I think it's really good. And I really enjoy the version of on Animalized Life Uncensored, even though I know uh, Julian, he really don't care for, for that video. But but I think that's a great version of that song live. And I think it worked well in the 80s. And I still go and listen to it once or twice. I never go back and listen to All the Way with that cowbell. So <laughs> I'm, 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 wow. I'm voting for Animal. Cowbell's fault. <laughs> wow. I actually, I've loved all the way since the first time I heard it on the Hotter Than Hell album. Um, I I Daniel never, couldn't be more disappointed with us. I have never liked. <laughs> I have never liked Thrills in the Night. Yeah, I know, I know. I, it it really, it, it really is not one of the songs that works for me. Whereas I was one of those people in Concord going absolutely nuts in the audience when they started playing <laughs> all the way, and everyone's looking at me, yeah. not the band. They're like, "What the fuck's the matter with him? You having yeah. a seizure?" Um, <laughs> <laughs> it it really was a yeah. fantastic moment for me and everyone else around me is like what the fuck is this <laughs> it, it, you, you could actually oh, yeah. feel the, the energy I remember that. went down it's and Julian like, and Ken Yay! standing up and no one else like I can't believe yeah. I play yeah. this there were two yeah. of you and then they're like yeah. I didn't they're like, heard that. It's like two people in the audience going nuts, you know, die hard, die hard. <laughs> you know, die hard. Play rock and roll night. No, it, I, I mean it, it's it's a no brainer. Live, hilarious. That that was a great moment on the Rock the Nation tour. So um, I'm really grateful that they did pull out some of those you know older songs for us. Would have loved to have had Lover All I Can. There we go. All right, title track, Hotter Than Hell, going up against. Oh, no. Uh oh, <clears throat> hot, hot, hotter than hell. You know she's gonna leave you well done. Mm -hmm. Oh, fire! Heaven's on fire, oh. hotter than hell. <laughs> heaven, heaven oh, versus uh, hell, baby. Yeah. All right, uh, mm -hmm. who's up next? Mark, get us started. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, honestly, to me, this this should be this should be a, a no brainer. Now, I, I'm I'm gonna I'm curious to see my good friend and partner in arms, Daniel's reaction to my comment to this, but I'm going to go with Heaven's on Fire. Why? Because I I think it's a great song. It's always been a fantastic song from the very beginning with the what? 
like the all that from that point on, it was great. It's very simple song. Yeah, it's just bam, bam. It's just easy chording, but it's catchy. The drumming is infectious. Everything about it is really catchy. It makes you just stand up and start rocking. And the problem with Hotter Than Hell is the fact that it's on this album with this production and the way they played it. Like if you listen to the way they play this song on a live, there's much more energy to it. There's much more appeal to it. On this version on the album, I you can barely make out the drums. It almost sounds like a click track, the drums. It's just so uninspired, the drumming on that version. It's just really bad. I mean, and that, that cheesy gong they put on in there too, that like, oh no, why did you do that? It's just terrible. Honestly, I, I think Hotter Than Hell as a song live works. I mean, whatever they did, like in the on the live versions that made them so great, I think that was the eye opener for them to say that you know what our studio albums really are terrible. We need to step it up because on a live, all these songs that were mediocre sounding sounded so great. But you know, the, this this is another example though of a song where the production didn't work for it, the performance was uninspired, but everything about Heaven's on Fire is the complete opposite. It's inspiring. It sounds good. It's catchy. It's memorable. Heaven's on Fire is the hands down winner to me. Thank you. That was a wonderful soliloquy. Daniel. I have to agree with Mark. Um, I really love both songs, uh, but uh, the studio version of Harder Than Hell is not the best one. I really like the ending part of Harder Than Hell. Da -da 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 -da. You know that part. Oh, that Sabbath rock. theory. Yeah. Yeah, that's real rocks. Uh, but Heaven's on Fire is such a perfect radio-friendly song of the 80s. Um, everything from the from the cool intro, of course. You always know it's that song. It's a perfect intro, even though uh, the 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 story is uh, the the it's it's sad that it was just him doing his yodeling, warming yeah. up, and warm they up. capture it uh, yeah. with the warm up. Yeah, uh, radio-friendly without being too soft and you know syrupy, um, and um, the vocals, of course, you can't really do Heaven's on Fire justice. I've never heard any other band doing it like Paul does it on the album. Um, and I also like, you know, the whoa, when you hear Paul's song doing the high high voice and jeans like an octave octave lower. Mm. It's so perfect and it's really well. I think it, it's well produced and you hear every instrument. <laughs> instrument. And to me, it's always been a favorite because it's it's what got me into Kiss. You know, yeah. like many other Swedish people, it's like the second wave of Kiss fans in Sweden. Uh, Animalize was really big over here, and it's still one of my favorite songs. Even though, as Mark said, it's really simple, but uh, it works. And it's not soft, but it's simple, and it's a great song, and it's a classic. So I have to give my vote on to Heavens on Fire, even though. I'm a bit afraid that Hotter Than Hell will knock it out. We'll see. Let's find out. Mm. Let's uh, go to Lonnie. Um, it's tough. It really is. But it's, that's, I got to go Heaven's on Fire, though. Yay. Yeah. Um, as hard, as difficult of a decision as it is. I mean, you ask me five minutes from now, I might I might make a different choice now even because it's it's so close and they're so they're both of them are such great kiss songs. Um but I think that Heaven's on Fire, I don't know, maybe it maybe it's more of a nostalgic thing with me that Heaven's on Fire is you know, analyzes on the first albums I had as a kid. You know, um just just love that just love that song just so much. So Although I do like Hotter Than Hell. I mean, I can sit here and talk about Hotter Than Hell, how great that is too. But at the end of the day, um, Heaven's on Fire is the superior one, in my opinion. Yeah, I think what Mark said about your listening to the live version is jumping into my head right. at this point in the conversation because there are elements of that studio version of Hotter Than Hell, the, the pseudo Japanese or Asian, you know, music fade out, fade in and the gong mm. and the sludginess that when you line it up against King Biscuit Alive, 
it, it's a completely different song when you can hear it with clarity and quality production. I've got to go with Heavens on Fire, not only for that reason, but because I came a fan in the 80s, because it was in rotation on MTV so often, because it is such a damn cool song, a damn cool video. Mm. Um, and, and it just means more to me um, on the studio version than the Hotter Than Hell studio version so uh, i'm i'm gonna throw my my hat my head into the guillotine as well mm -hmm. and uh, leave ken for a final opportunity to um save grace for the originals ken well um yeah i'm gonna it's like lonnie said it's very tough um but i i yeah i will go with um heavens on fire wow you know, because, yeah. I mean, Hotter Than Hell, I thought it was pretty good when I first listened to it, uh, but I knew it was something that was too slow and it, and it was dragging a little bit. I know Paul was trying to write uh, uh, Free, Free's All Right Now, you know, that is an inspiration for that song, but it's nowhere close to that <laughs> uh, quality mm. of song. So, yeah, uh, it, yeah, again, it's, it's a much better live. But, you know, just picking the studio version of it against Heavens on Fire, which is a great, it's a hit song. You know, obviously it was a great song. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to go with Heavens on Fire. All right. Here we are. Unanimous. Sweet. Haters. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But again, it does come down to the sound. And that's just separ separate if you can. And some, right. some of us can't. It is very difficult to separate those songs, especially when we talk about MTV Unplugs or Alive 3s, Alive, you know, some of the live renditions of the songs that have clearly made them better. All right. Next up, this is the last matchup, and there'll be one song uh, getting a, a pass into the bonus round is Watching You going up against mm, which, Watching, watching you, you, the current Kiss FAQ song story series. That's right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> God, I hate promotion. Shameless plug. Uh, oh, God. Watching you burn, bitch, burn. burn, bitch, burn. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. There's going to be, I don't think there's going to be any drama here. There's going to be no controversy. There's going to be, oh, Daniel, is there? Get us started. Well, burn, bitch, burn might be my favorite Gene song off of <laughs> Animal Eyes. Uh, mm -hmm. I like the way Gene sings it. Uh, of course, the lyrics are absolutely terrible, um, <laughs> and um, but I do enjoy it. Paul is a whole lot on this song as well. You can hear him very clearly during the chorus, and he does do these little "oh yeah" and "no" as some <laughs> short words here and there. So ad libs, you feel, yeah, ad libs exactly. So, uh, but once again, the lazy drums on the Gene song, unfortunately, and uh, <laughs> well. Who am I kidding? It stands no chance against watching you because watching you is a classic, creepy lyrics, cool riff, uh, cool variants of the riff all through the song. It's a very varied song with, with a whole lot of riffing going on. It almost seems like Ace Frehley would have written it because there are really cool riffs in it, and he was really good at that uh, at this point. Um, and I love the ending, you know, Peter Chris shouting out, watching us with his, you know, best yeah. whis whiskey mm -hmm. voice. So, uh, watching you for me. Nice. You know, get... A lot of people who are viewing this uh, live episode more than tuned into the Kiss T Dubai 2020 goodbye. Wow! Um, <laughs> I, I had to, to work that in somehow today. Um, I didn't hear that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> watching you versus Burn Bitch. It's a no-brainer. Burn Bitch Burn is just complete poo. Uh, watching You is a fantastic song. Well, actually, Burn Bitch Burn has a cool music track, but again, it needed Vinnie Vincent or someone to actually help um, write it better lyrically. Musically, I don't have a problem with any of Gene's songs on um, Animal Eyes. They just all need help in terms of what he sang. So, Watching You, no-brainer. Mark? Yeah, Um Watching you is is a great song. I, I've always loved it. I've always loved that riff at the beginning. And again, this is one of those songs where 
while the production isn't perfect for it, it does definitely suit it more than other songs on this album. I think it sounds good. The, the one thing I've always found interesting, though, is when you do a side-by-side -side comparison to this and the uh, the original demo version that was done with mm -hmm. Eddie Kramer. I, I always thought the Eddie Kramer one was just that, just that much better sounding sonically of this version of the mm -hmm. song. But even yeah. still, uh, even the worst sounding like version of it like in a, in a loft or something preparing for a for a show sounds better than burn bitch burn okay burn bitch burn is terrible it's the one of the worst songs gene ever wrote okay it's I mean, a hot take <laughs> log in the <laughs> fireplace like, wrote, come yeah. on man like the, the, that is so stupid the lyrics that he wrote for this song it's unbelievable yeah, christmas song and and, uh -huh. and to think that paul could have sat there fireplace and did the backup <laughs> With a straight cool. face on this, Un unbelievable. You know, just it's just utter dribble, just crap. Okay, it should be erased from all Kiss history. This song. Okay, wow. the fact that it's going to be <laughs> watching you is an insult to watching you. Okay, so my vote is for watching you. Oh. Yeah, watching you has one of those guitar riffs that's got me reaching for a guitar whenever yes. I hear it. it. It burn, bitch, burn. Mm. Has me reaching for the power plug. Toilet you paper. Know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Mark, Mark's uh, in with watching you, Lonnie. Yeah, it's watching you. I mean, come on. I mean, for, watching you is 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 again a really fun fun song with a great riff and just classic Kiss sounding. Um, and I and I do, you know, I, I love the version on the live, but this I like this version uh, off of Hotter and Hell as well. I think the money production really works well on, on watching you. Um, on, on higher than hell so and it, it it there really is no comparison between between the two songs for me yeah one is a song and one isn't all right ken <laughs> you've got some one last opportunity one last. for some love for gene <laughs> compared to sprint is my favorite gene song on that album um <laughs> i, I like the riff <laughs> yeah well yeah I, <laughs> I like the riff. I think it's cool. Uh, cool verses. The the chorus again. Every song uh, for this album, Gene songs, they the, the chorus didn't work on any of his songs. The verses were good, but the the choruses just weren't there yet because um, it's just burn, bitch, burn, hoo hoo hoo, you know, kind of thing, you know, over and over. <laughs> it's like what? and then and then. <laughs> It was disappeared on my screen, but um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> watching you is just a classic, great Kiss song. I mean, total, you know, it, that's top end Gene, and then you got the lower end Gene with you know, kind of with, in the Burton Rich Band with some of the songs on Animal Eyes. Um, I don't think it's horrible. I don't think it should be erased from history, <laughs> but as Mark said, but uh, it, it's it's yeah, it, it's it's no matchup for watching you. Okay, so that was a very that was like a UPS package trying to reach you in Concord from me in San Francisco. A long way around of getting to the point of watching you, right? Go to LA first. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so <laughs> here we are. The uh, the matchups that have um, won hotter than hell has obviously done a lot better, but two mm -hmm. songs did make it through. So making it through into the next round from this one are Under the Gun, Heaven's on Fire. Coming home, got to choose main line. Let me go, rock and roll. Strange ways, all the way, and watching you. No real surprises, I don't think, in this round. Um, I, I want to touch on one last thing, other than thanking everyone who's joined us live today to watch this episode. Is as I was reminded in a podcast episode posted on the FAQ this week. Um, the past few days have been the fifth anniversary of Atlanta and Vinnie Vincent's um, mighty return. Lonnie, you and your lovely gave me a hell of a lot of help that weekend, you know, on the table. But, you know, what do you think about that looking back now? Does it still, you know, measure up to kind of the magnitude that it felt at the time? You know, what's your quick recap of uh, Vinnie's emergence five years ago? Um, yeah, it, it was... It's still cool that it happened, in my opinion, because at the time, 
And for a long time, I thought I would never get the opportunity to meet him or, or you know, or anything like that. You know, it, like that that ship had sailed, in my opinion. And when they announced that this was going to happen, like, I, I, you know, I said, oh, I'd like to go. And, and actually, it was my wife that said, no, let's go. You, you know, don't stop. Get off the fence and let's just go do this. Um, and I'm glad I did. I mean, it was that the, the weekend had its ups and its downs. You know, was it wasn't as organized as, as it could have been or should have been. Um, and you ended up he, working for some weirdo. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy, I, had, I was managing this guy's table for a while. And he disappeared on me. And <laughs> and but but I'm still glad I I'm glad I went. I'm glad I had the opportunity to meet him and to. And, to, and just hang out with a bunch of, of great Kiss Kiss fans all weekend at the same time, but um, it, and, and that's the part I guess that stands out to me more than anything is that the camaraderie um, between between Julian and like and like Andrew was there and Andy was there and just like Nils was there and like it was like who's who of Kiss fans almost basically it was it was kind of crazy how many people that you knew all converged on Atlanta that weekend um, to see Vinny for the first time. And up until the time that he actually came out on stage for the first time, it was all the question amongst us, is this really going to happen? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and he was an hour late and we were all kind of sitting there and like, okay. <laughs> and, and he did. And, you know, I, I'm glad I went. I'm glad I had that opportunity. And I, I'm actually really glad I went because now what he, I mean, he signed my history book that weekend and now he charges $500 to sign history books. So I'm really glad I went that weekend and, and got it done before um, we decided that um, um, inflation was going to hit the KISS convention circuit. So um, it, it was a great time and I'm did, glad I did it. Didn't you get a Vinnie Vincent tattoo? Or I did. I, I, can, we, can we have a look? Yeah. Can, you, can we want to look at it? I yeah. Got I got shorts on today. I don't know if we Vinnie can, Vincent tattoo. I don't know if we could get this or not. But, <laughs> but anyway. There it is. Let's see. Gene. That's Gene. Oh, Vinnie Vincent down go. below there. There it is. Vinnie Vincent. Down Vinnie yeah. Vincent. Yeah. It's got a great, uh, great autograph. Looks good. Yeah, you know what? That weekend was real fun. Uh, Vinny was Vinny was awesome. You know, meeting him was very cool. Hanging out with fellow fans, though, that was the high point. You know, the dinner the first night with Nils um, and a lot of the European fans who came in. Um, you know, so many different people. Uh, obviously, I had a table and getting to hang with you know so many people who some brought in books some bought books some didn't get ten dollars change apparently um it, it was so cool roger bernard was there with the kiss books the legendary kiss books that was yeah. absolutely amazing i ended up getting roped into doing a q a with kurt and jeff uh hosting that with no notice was hilarious mm -hmm. but it was also fun to get up on the stage with with those guys so it it was an amazing thing um the excitement level the anticipation i don't think can ever be be recaptured yeah uh, for for a kiss event so it, it really was one of those things that was a moment in time that i'm super glad i didn't miss yeah, um yeah. that i that i did make the effort for because i've missed so much in history uh, you know, I, I would kind of be upset if I'd missed that and Peter Chris's cutting room show, the, knowing mm. what I know after the fact. So, Dan, Danny, Danny Singleman says the Eddie Trunk interview was an odd one. And that's actually kind of funny because we were all, Julian, we were all in that room um, waiting for Vinny. And Eddie Trunk interviewed Vinny before he came out in that room, like where the books were and everything else was. And Becky was actually sitting at the table just sitting behind your table while we were doing that. Cause she's like, I don't, I don't need to go in there. And this, I really don't care. And she's sitting in there and they come in, they're going to bring Eddie trunk in and they tell her like, you got to get out of here. And she's like, what? She's like, no, you have to leave. She was like, I'm watching the merchandise. Like, well, we don't care. You have to leave. Eddie trunk's coming in here with Vinny right now. And she's like, I wouldn't know either one of them if they were in the room right now. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> yeah, you know it's it's interesting about one thing I find about this whole situation that's very fascinating to me is that time period was the most I remember Kiss fans embracing Vinnie Vincent. Like back at that point mm -hmm. when they heard that he was coming back, people were 
open arm and wanted it to happen so badly. I remember watching the Facebook feeds when it was happening live at that time. And people were saying, rumor has it, he's in the room. Rumor has it, he's in there with Eddie, blah, blah, blah. Like, all this stuff. There was excitement like mm -hmm. crazy about this. And then when he, when he came out and he was all smiles and people were getting pictures. I never forget all the amount of pictures of everybody smiling. I saw even Lonnie there, ear to ear smile that he was there getting his arm signed, uh, mm -hmm. sorry, his leg signed. And you know, it, it was a fascinating thing to see. And just as fascinating to see how quickly it went 180 on him again. Like I, I couldn't believe that he let it happen again to him like that. I mean, he, he had such a great opportunity to fix things with KISS fans and it just went completely down the toilet. I, I just think it's a fascinating thing when you look at it from that perspective. Yeah, I look back at some of the photos. Tim was there, Nils was there. So Nils did the cover for Tim and my you know, books for uh, the solo album book and for uh, Odyssey and also for uh, Crazy Nights, which Tim does have interviews in, you know, so to have the three of us there was, was very cool personally. All right. So Parasite gets a free pass into the next round. Clearly, Good. let's do the pick of, of the, the next album matchup is going to feature oh. who? Unmasked. Ooh. Unmasked. All right. Versus... That, that's not the last one. Unmasked. Not in the shape. Unmasked versus monster. Ooh. <laughs> there we go. That'll be interesting. That is going to be really interesting. I, I would oh, know what. Two different albums there. Ooh. Yeah, I, I don't wow. have any kind of uh, thoughts on that other than mm. it might get ugly, it might get heated because there's a lot of dross on both of those suckers. Mm. In to my mind so mm. so there we go <laughs> one last thank you to everyone who's joined us today it's very much appreciated when you give us your time to join us on these live episodes if you're listening after the fact we appreciate you just as much for giving us your time um but for now from lonnie from ken mark daniel and myself thanks for joining us and we shall see you next time thank you for spending time listening to the kiss faq podcast today all sales are final there are no refunds if you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again. Yeah.